everyone. Welcome to the 2023 Senior Center Grant Information Session. We are extremely excited uh, that we're able to have this opportunity again, and I'm going to talk to you about how that opportunity has come available. But my name is Sydney Chatreau, and I am the TCAD Senior Center Liaison. Um, and we're going to go over for the next 45 minutes or so uh, the grant process, how you can apply for a grant, some timelines, uh, and then of course have time to answer any questions that you all have about it. So this should be very familiar to many of you. Um, a lot of the individuals on this call uh, have been a grant recipient or have applied for one of the TCAD Senior Center grants in the past. So we have a very similar look. We uh, created a new request for proposals last year and just kind of updated that to reflect any updates that we have for the 2023 proposal. You all should have gotten this in the email that I sent um, last Monday, as well as the reminder that I sent for this particular uh, information session yesterday. So you can complete this paper format uh, using that request for proposal, or you can see the link below there uh, is the link to submit the application electronically. Um, if you do click that link right now, it's not going to be open because we're not accepting applications until July 5th. And I'm going to go over that again uh, here momentarily. Uh, I will send out this slide deck to everyone. So if you want to take diligent notes, please feel free to do so. But you will also get um, this slide deck uh, by this afternoon when I post the video on our YouTube channel. So very familiar look. Hopefully many of you have seen this before. So we do have a new round of funding. So TCAD, uh, Tennessee Commission on Aging and Disability. Sorry, I always uh, use our, our shorthand name, but TCAD is Tennessee Commission on Aging and Disability. We received an additional million dollars to fund senior centers from the Tennessee General Assembly. Uh, for those of you who've been around for a few years, uh, this is actually the third year uh, that we have gotten funds uh, from the Tennessee General Assembly. In 2021, we received 400,000, last year a million, and this year another million. So we're very thankful and appreciative to the Tennessee General Assembly uh, in support of our senior centers across the state. In case you all are wondering what bill, uh, what the legislation is, uh, this is kind of verbatim, word for word, what the law says. We also have the bill number, and when you get these materials, Um, sorry, I wasn't able to turn off those prompts. Teams was not nice to me this morning. Um, but if you're curious about where uh, anything that you need to cite uh, for maybe your board members, if you're having to kind of ask them for permission to do grants or county governments or whatever your um, managing body is, here's kind of the reference for that. What I really, really want to emphasize, and one of the big things I want you all to take away from this presentation, is this funding is non-recurring. We are extremely thankful and grateful again that we've gotten this funding uh, for the last three years in a row, but it's not guaranteed from year to year. We're going to keep advocating for it. We're going to keep doing everything that we're doing in order to make these funds available, but we cannot guarantee in 2024 these funds will continue. So I just want to really kind of make that uh, kind of one of the points to take away from this presentation. A little bit, a little bit of background. Um, we will. Um, we will a lot of people are calling in, um, and welcome everyone. We will be distributing 125 $8,000 grants. This is the same as we did last year. Um, senior centers, you can only apply for one grant per senior center. So uh, you can't apply for multiple, say, hey, I want 8,000 for a capital project, then I want 8,000 for programs and activities. Each senior center is uh, eligible for one $8,000 grant. Very similar to 2022. This funding is available to all senior centers, whether that is state funded senior centers or non state funded senior centers. Um, so, everyone, we have 195 senior centers across the state, and everyone is eligible for these funds. Only 125 will receive the funds, but all 195 are eligible. And applications, uh, as I kind of mentioned a little bit ago, are available online through that link. Again, not open yet. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then that paper form that's in the request for proposal that you all should have received. Last year, we received applications from 89 of the 95 counties in Tennessee. 
I'm really, really hoping and pushing and that we're going to get applications from all 95 counties this year. So encourage everyone to apply. All right, suppliers and uh, direct deposits. This was new for last year and we've had some confusion, so I wanted to touch on it a little bit again this year. So in order for the state of Tennessee, which is what we are, we're uh, a commission of the state of Tennessee. Wow, that's a lot of feedback. Hold on one second. Um, you must be a supplier with the state of Tennessee for us to be able to issue funds, to give you that $8,000 if you are a grant recipient. Um, many of you already are. So if you've already received one of our uh, TCAD Senior Center grants, you're already a supplier. You're already halfway there. You're good to go. Um, however, if maybe this is the first time that you've applied for one of our grants, maybe you're a new Senior Center Director and you're not sure if you got one a grant before or not, um, you feel free to check with me. Say, hey, Sydney, can you see if I'm a supplier? Uh, we're able to kind of check that for you. Um, but we're getting a lot of questions already that I've looked up. I'm not sure how to become a supplier. Good rule of thumb. If you've already received money from us, you are. If you have a contract with your local area agency on aging and disability, most likely you are. Uh, if you don't have either of those, let me know and I'll double check. Um, or if you just want me to double check, happy to do that as well. Direct deposit. While this is not a requirement to get funds, this is the easiest way and most effective way for us to give you your funds if you are a grantee. Um, it's a lot easier for the state of Tennessee to deposit money into a bank account, then cut a check, mail it, make sure we have the correct mailing address, could get lost in the mail. So many different things can happen. So again, not a requirement, strongly, strongly encouraged that you all have direct deposit set up with the state. Um, and if you want to do that, please submit your paperwork as soon as possible. Even before you submit your uh, proposal for the grant, you can get this process started for direct deposit. Um, I can also, just like assisting you in finding out if you're a supplier with the state, I can also assist you in finding out if you already have a direct deposit account set up with the state, what that number is, or kind of the process of how you change the direct deposit account that is listed with the state. Again. Not a requirement, we can mail you a check. This is just much easier, faster, and honestly probably safer uh, to make sure that you get that $8,000 if you're awarded one of the grants this year. Um, also, I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to type those into the chat box. That way you don't forget. At the end, we're gonna have time for question and answer where you all can unmute yourself. But if you have a question that's just kind of burning, uh, please feel free to type that into the chat box. Okay, moving right along. Eligibility. Funds are encouraged to, to support the four following things. Capital projects. Uh, we've had senior centers replace HVAC units. Um, one senior center in particular, this is one of my favorite stories, uh, replace their HVAC system, their uh, heating and cooling bill, or electric bill, I should say, uh, was about three to $400 a month. They replaced it. Their bill went down to $125 a month. So not only did they replace that, but they're saving money on a monthly basis because of that capital project. Um, any other equipment, uh, floors, painting, roof, paving the parking lot, all of those things have been done uh, through the grants in the past and are welcome this year. Outreach and education, we've had senior centers uh, redo their brochures and marketing materials, uh, new banners, new awnings coming into the center. Uh, so in case it rains, you know, people waiting for transportation don't have to wait out in the rain. Uh, programs and activities, so many new exercise programs, art programs, libraries uh, have been kind of revamped and built from these funds. And then routine operating expenses, sometimes uh, you just need a month where you need to keep the lights on. Uh, insurance to make sure that you meet uh, certain grant requirements or contract requirements. All of those things are allowable expenses for the grant funds. If you ever have any questions on, can I spend money on this? Please let me know, we'll work through it. Uh, sometimes you get the grants in August, you have these great ideas now that, oh, I wanna repave the parking lot. And then April of next year, your HVAC unit goes out 
well, maybe I shouldn't re maybe I don't need to repave the parking lot. Maybe I need to replace other equipment. So we are flexible as things come up unexpectedly that you need to kind of change your focus on what these funds are used for. Just let me know, shoot me an email, give me a call. I'll make a note um, in our documentation and we can get kind of pivot a little bit on what those funds are gonna be spent for. So we really wanna be flexible with this and make sure that it's benefiting the senior center, you all as the staff, uh, and your participants. Now what funds cannot be used to support? Anything associated with bingo. Please don't even mention bingo in your proposal. No B words. Do not mention bingo, please. I'm begging you. <laughs> I see some smiles. Um, also, uh, funds cannot be purchase, uh, used to purchase gift cards, and also a, a big no-no. And then funds cannot be used for any type of staff training, so sending, sending tra staff to conferences and things like that. That is not allowed uh, for these funds. And those are really the, the three big things. As long as it's legal, basically anything else is, uh, you know, uh, you can use it for. Again, any questions, please feel free to reach out to me anytime and I'll make sure to get you the answer on if it's an allowable expense or not. I don't see any questions coming in yet, so we're gonna keep on going. Application timeline, these are some very important dates. Again, these are all in your proposal, your request for proposal documentation. You're gonna get these slides. Feel free to take notes, but um, here's our timeline as well. June 12th, last Monday, you received the request for proposal. Great timing on my part, because I was on vacation, so I'll work on that better next year, playing a little bit better. Today, we have our information session. Thank you all again for uh, participating. And if you have any questions, again, please feel free to type those into the chat box. July 5th, this is our first very important date. This is when applications are allowed to be submitted. So these are when the applications are opening. We are not accepting any applications prior to July 5th. You can start working on them. I encourage you, and we'll talk about this in a minute as well, to start getting your proposal, your application together now. No need to waste any time. Um, you can start filling it out. We just aren't going to accept them to review until July 5th. So giving you a little bit of time to get ahead of the game. August 4th is our deadline for the proposals to be submitted. So you have a month in order to get those over to me. And they have to be submitted by four o'clock p.m. Central Time or five o'clock Eastern Time. That's kind of our close of business when I leave the office is four o'clock every day. If you submit at 401, unfortunately, you will not be considered for a grant. So please submit before that. <laughs> August 14th is when we expect we will be able to let you know if you have received a grant or not. So again, we're given 125 grants out. If we have 140 applications, some people uh, are gonna have to unfortunately be told no. And I'm gonna go over the scoring metrics and what all that means here shortly as well. But August 14th uh, is when you should know, get an email from me, congratulations or unfortunately. Now, if you are one of the lucky 125, here is a, the timeline that you all will need for grantees. In the fall of 2023, we're not given specific dates on this, we're leaving it a little bit broad, a little bit more open. Um, we are going to be sending contracts to all of our grantees. So between August 14th, when we know who's getting the grant, and the end of fall, our legal team is going to start to work on contracts, and it is a lot of contracts. 125 is a huge amount of work, so they're gonna turn that out as quickly as they can. Um, and we must have a signature on the contract before we can send you an invoice. Um, and the person who can sign the contract is whoever your authorized signatory is. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but it could be you as the senior center director has the authority to sign contracts. Maybe it's your board chair, maybe it's the county mayor if you're um, with the county or city mayor if you're with the city. So gotta make sure that we know who your authorized signatory is for the contract. Once we have the signed contract, I will send you an invoice. We do um, one invoice for the full $8,000. You don't have to send invoices for everything that you purchase. It's gonna be one, I'm gonna send it to you. We're gonna make sure it has the correct method that you want 
to receive your payment, whether that be direct deposit or mailing a check to you. Um, and then you'll sign that. We'll get it over to our fiscal department. And by the winter of 2023, maybe stretching into 2024, we're hoping not, but just in case, um, we will have all of our funds distributed to our grantees. For those of you who were grantees last year, there was a couple of hiccups that happened in terms of distributing the funds. We're trying to be very proactive this year to make sure those hiccups don't occur again. So fingers crossed, we're gonna do everything we can to make that a much smoother process. So really the important things here is we have to have that signed contract before we can send you that invoice to sign. You have to sign both of those before we can get you your funds. Yay, paperwork, right? March 29th, uh, you have your midterm report due. So for this grant, for quality assurance purposes, we do a midterm report or midterm check-in and we do a final check-in. And usually that's about six months into the grant process. You're probably thinking, why March 29th? That's a very random date. Uh, well, March 31st is a Sunday, so we're doing it the Friday before the end of March. So March 29th will be when your midterm report is due and we'll send you all a template. You just gotta fill that template out four very easy, um, four or five, depending. Very easy things to, to report to us that I'm gonna go over here in a minute as well. September 30th, another very, very important date. All $8,000 must be expended by September 30th, 2024. That's your deadline to have all your money spent. October 31st, happy Halloween. Um, the final report is going to be due. The midterm report, and the final report template are the exact same. We're doing the midterm uh, check-in just to make sure funding is being spent or if there's any uh, delays or obstacles in spending funding. funding. We know that kind of midway through the process, we can work with you to make sure that those funds are gonna be expended by that September 30th deadline. And then October 31st, you get to tell us all the wonderful things that you've accomplished. The midterm reports are crucial for when I report the activities to um, our commission members, who's kind of our board of directors. Uh, they like to know what's going on, as well as giving status updates to the Tennessee General Assembly uh, and letting them know the impact that the funding that they're giving us is having. So that way we can continue to get that fund, those funds in the future. So we're not just trying to pile paperwork on you. I promise there is a method to our madness. Hey, the application, it's a little bit longer this year uh, than we've had in the past, and there are reasons for that. So again, I can't show you what the electronic application looks like because it's locked right now, but it's everything that's on this paper application is on the electronic application. So the name of your center. Did you know that senior centers have like three different names? <laughs> Diane's like, yes, I did. So there's, in my experience, there's what you all like to be called which is great, I'll call you whatever you want me to call you. Then there's what the state of Tennessee calls you. And then there's what the IRS calls you. So I'm trying to do my best to organize all three of those names. Uh, so senior center name, this can be whatever you want me to call you, that's fine. Uh, we also need to know what type of entity you are. If you're a nonprofit, if you're city government or if you're county government. You can find this on Tennessee Secretary of State, but I'm sure most of you, um, will be able to uh, already know that. I had a question, how can I view the PowerPoint? We are gonna send the PowerPoint out um, after the presentation and it should be shared right now on your screen. Uh, your physical address of the Senior Center. I learned this the hard way last year when I tried to mail out different things that sometimes your physical address is different than your mailing address. So I'm gonna ask for both of those. Uh, so physical address that so we know where uh, to send individuals who want to become participants of your center. And then please, if it's different, if it's not different, you can just put same or you don't have to fill it out. But if you have a different mailing address, maybe a PO box or something along those lines, please include that on your application this year as well. Uh, the county of the senior center location. This is very important for one of the parts of our scoring metrics that we'll talk about here in a minute. We also want to know your senior, senior center hours of operation. So Monday through Friday, I have listed, you know, 8 to 4, 8 to 3, 10 to 2, whatever that is. We just kind of want to know when your uh, center is operating 
So that way, if I need to contact you, I'm really bad about just missing people <laughs> when I have to call them or I'm on central time and I totally forget um, that McMinn uh, County Senior Center is on Eastern time and then I miss Diane by like 30 minutes. So if you all could help by just kind of putting those hours of operation in there, that would help me out a lot. Uh, and then the Senior Center contact. So this is the main person that's going to receive all of the grant correspondence. So mainly this is gonna be done via email, uh, some mailing, uh, maybe a phone call or two. In the past, some people have asked, can we have two grant contacts? Not a problem, I can always list more than one person, but we need to have at least one main contact for me to be able to communicate back and forth, hey, reminders on midterm reports, please don't forget to sign your contract, things of that nature. Okay, the next part, this is where our authorized signatory comes into play. So again, this could be you as the senior center director. It might be your board chair. Uh, if you're city county government, it could be your mayor. Depends on how your um, organization is structured. But I need to know their first name, last name, position, email, and phone. So they will get emailed uh, the contract to sign. Uh, when it comes to signing the contracts, I will be sure to include and copy the grant contact as well. So that way, if it's your board chair and maybe you kind of have to, to track them down or remind them, hey, don't forget to sign this, you're going to be notified when the contracts go out to that authorized signatory. Next is your grant goals, and you can mark all that apply. If you want some money to go to all four of these categories, perfect. If you just want it to go toward capital projects, great. No scoring is based on how many goals you want to try to achieve. Um, when it comes to paving the parking lot, odds are you're going to use all $8,000 for that. When it comes to programming, maybe you use a couple thousand dollars and then maybe some outreach. So feel free to mark as many as apply. Project narrative, this doesn't have to be super duper long. You can be as lengthy as you want. Um, we've seen in the past about 500 words usually gets the message across uh, on what you want to accomplish with the $8,000. There is the requirement to get a letter from your state representative and your state senator. This has always been a requirement, is gonna to continue to be a requirement. And we have templates and we're gonna talk about that here in a minute as well. We also need your organization's W-9. I'm gonna go into more detail on that as well. One thing that we added this year to hopefully expedite some of the struggles we had last year in issuing the funds is we're asking if you receive, if you're awarded a grant, what is your preference on receiving those funds? Do you want it through direct deposit? If yes, wonderful. We just need to know those last four digits of that routing number so I can look into our state data system and make sure that that account is available. If it's not, I'll let you know and say, hey, we might be having some issues. We might need to do some additional paperwork. Or you can have the check mailed to you. So let us know who you want it to be the attention to. If it's um, Sue Walker, and then the senior center and the address. So that way I know who the check is supposed to be going to. Please don't mark both. We need to have your preference on one or the other. If something is going wonky and crazy and you want direct deposit, but we can't figure it out, we always have that check option as a backup. You will get your money, I promise. <laughs> and then the last thing, kind of as I mentioned a little earlier, things pop up unexpected right? You might need a new roof, some storm damage. Uh, and what you thought in the proposal that you wanted to do can change within a year, within a couple months. So we ask that all the senior center contacts, whoever's filling out the application, doesn't have to be your authorized signatory, uh, but whoever's filling out the application to sign this agreement that basically says, upon receiving these funds, it's going to go for the improvement and benefit of the senior center and will be expended by September 30th, 2024. So this kind of encompasses everything, that if something does change, whatever you all want to spend the money on is going to go for the benefit and improvement of the senior center overall. Hopefully that's a, an easy statement for everyone to say, oh yeah, I support that. And then you'll hit submit or you'll uh, fax it to me. So you can send in electronically, we've talked about that, Paper form, you can fax it in or you can mail it in. The state mailing system is rather slow. 
I will say that. So if you're going to mail it, mail it sooner rather than later. Fax and electronic is going to be more efficient because I'm going to be able to know the date and time that you faxed it or the date and time that you submitted it electronically. If you mail it, it's going to be the date that we received it. So just food for thought on that, that electronic and fax is the preferred method, but you always have that mail option if needed. All right, what everyone's been waiting for, I'm sure, is the scoring metric. So every year we update this scoring metric. So just because you received a grant last year based on that scoring metric does not guarantee that you're going to receive a grant this year. Same with, with if you did not receive a grant last year, you could receive a grant this year. So we try, we make it competitive, but we also from year to year want to make sure that we're using the best data that we can uh, to get these funds out. So the first thing that we look at um, is targeted areas based on the Department of Economic and Community Development. And they rate all the counties in the state by distress, at risk, transitional, competitive, and attainment. And you can see kind of the scoring there. All of the scoring um, is going to be in the very back of the request for proposal, starting with Appendix A. Um, it'll list out all of the counties in alphabetical order, hopefully. Did my best to make sure that was, that was a thing. Uh, messed that up a little bit last year. Um, but it'll tell you in the distressed counties which counties are listed for five points, which are listed for four points. So that way you can look for your county and figure out kind of your total score throughout all of our different scoring metrics. We also have the estimated 65 and older population by the Department of Health. I know we serve 60 and older. Unfortunately, the data that we have uh, locally is for 65 plus, so it's the, kind of the best that we could do um, with the data that we had. Still applies. Uh, and we're going by percentages. So if your county's percentage, the county that your senior center is located in, has a 30% or higher population of older adult, uh, adults 65 and older, you get five points and then you can kind of see how those percentages go and what that score is for percentage. Again, that is in Appendix B in your request for proposals, so you can look and find those percentages. The last piece of the scoring metrics is the older Tennesseans below uh, federal poverty level. And this you can find at, in the TCAD's State of Aging Profile, which is really great. Um, our Statistical analyst uh, Chelsea Uday uh, came not came up but developed this really great report that has a county by county profile. So if you haven't seen that, I encourage you to click on that and kind of check out where your county lies. Um, but very similar to everything that we've talked about, if you have 20 to 25 percent of your older adult population um, below the federal poverty level, you get five points, so on and so forth on the way down. And last, I don't want to forget to kind of hammer this point home as well. Those letters of support are required for your submission. In the years past, they've been uh, given a point value, one point for your representative, one point for your senator. We're not having points associated with those letters of support, but they are required in order for you to be considered to get a grant. If we don't have those letters of support, we're not going to be able to consider your application for funding. Speaking of letters of support, so the letters, uh, let's see, in Appendix, I want to say D, yes, in Appendix D of your request for proposal has this template that you can use when writing a letter to your representative to sign to support your grant application. So the letter should be written on that representative or senator's letterhead. So they just kind of copy and paste what you put on there on their head letterhead, have the date, um, kind of have fill in those um, bracketed bold statements. So support, you know, whatever senior center you're with, and then what your description of what you want the funds to be used for. And then send that off, have them sign it, and include it in your application. Please start doing this now. Please do not wait until the week that the application is due and then say, we haven't been able to contact our legislator or, uh, or our representative or our senator. They won't respond to us. 
We want the request for proposals to be out now, so that way you have plenty of time to uh, work with your elected officials to get these letters signed. And we want this to be local. So please do not contact Marsha Blackburn or um, um, Senator Haggerty's office. We don't need the, the, the DC reps. We want your local county rep. Um, and how you find those, you might ask. So here is the link. We're actually going to do an example real quick to where you can type in your address. So I'm going to do the South Central address because I've been working with that a little bit. So 101 Sam Watkins Boulevard, Mount Pleasant. We search it. Whatever your address is, it's going to tell you your representative and your senator. So these are the two gentlemen. Their, address, or their email address is down here. You can also click on, um, and they have a staff contact. Sometimes they have an email address for the staff contact. Um, but you want to email that legislature the draft of your letter of support in order to get that requirement of the grant complete. Now, how do I get out of this? There we go. So you'll have that link when I send out uh, the copy of the PowerPoint presentation as well. So again, we're looking for local legislatures, local representatives, local senators. We've had senior centers in the past have a letter of support from their county mayor. That's wonderful. We're, great. We're grateful that everyone supports our senior centers, but that's not a requirement of the grant. And it's not going to be able to be used as a substitute for a representative or a senator. So focus on those individuals. W-9 form. So this is where um, the state of Tennessee is very particular in what is put on your organization's W-9 form. So I know we've all seen these. I know you all have filled them out. And you're probably like, why on earth is Sydney talking about this W-9 form? Because we need to make sure a few things happen. So first, you have to make sure that your name that you put on this is identical to what is linked to your employer ID number or your IEN and what is with the IRS. So like I said on the application, tell me what you want me to call you. But if on your IRS form, and how you, you know, file your taxes and whatnot is um, McMinn County or something along those lines, and it doesn't match, then it's going to be rejected by the state of Tennessee. So please just make sure that those, those lines match. Your name is what is represented in your employee identification number. For-profit centers, I don't think we have any for-profit centers. Uh, maybe some of the non-state funded ones that I'm working on connecting with are uh, corporations. If you are a corporation, you can mark the C corporation here. Nonprofit city or county governments, which is a majority of us, I believe. Please mark other. And then in the line, if you are a nonprofit, say nonprofit 501c3. Or if you're government, click other and put government. If you have any other variation of that, it will be denied. So, food for thought. Also, you must sign, and this can be just the senior center director. It does not have to be your authorized signatory. You have to sign, and the date must be in the calendar year of 2023. We had a lot of people submit um, W-9s that they submitted previously with their previous application, but that was in 2021, and they weren't able to accept it in 2022. So please, fresh signature, fresh date. And then I know it looks like I'm yelling at you, and I don't mean to yell at you, but please don't make any other marks. If you accidentally mark individual, and then you use whiteout, and then you put other, they will deny it. Like any little teensy oops, I accidentally had a swipe of the pen. They will deny it, and I'll have to send it back to you to re-sign. And it gets frustrating for us both, and I don't want us to be frustrated. I want us to like each other. So if we can follow those simple steps, the W-9s will be no problem. And if for whatever reason it's rejected, I will work with the individual center to make sure it's corrected. So it's all going to work out. In terms of reporting, so this is for your midterm and your final reports. There's five things, four things required, five things would be great. The first thing is we just want you to tell us about what you did. Tell us about the great stuff. Tell us that you uh, purchased an HVAC system and now you're saving $200 a month. 
or uh, you repaved the parking lot and now everyone loves it because it's no longer a tripping hazard and they're not afraid to come to the center because they were initially afraid they were going to fall. Something along those lines. I'm cheery, happy. Those were, that last one was a pretty negative example. Sorry. Um, number of people served. We want this to be unduplicated. So I know we have our statewide database and we have units of service. Um, so we want this to be an unduplicated number. So, for example, if Teresa attends um, the congregate meal site, she also does an exercise program, uh, and she attended uh, an educational presentation. Sometimes in our system, that counts Teresa as three people, right, because she attended three different events. We want to make sure Teresa only counts as one person at the center. Does that make sense on how I'm describing unduplicated? And this is also a way that we report to the Tennessee General Assembly that we're reaching right now for the current grant, we're reaching over 40,000 older adults across the state through the grant services. And we want to make sure that we can tell them because of this semi-small pot of money, we're really making an impact on a large number of people. We also like pictures. I love pictures. I love before and after pictures. They are my favorite. We have some really great pictures of the kitchen before and then the kitchen after the remodel. And holy cow, does that start conversation. Or the flooring, even. Before it was all carpeted. Now it's beautiful hardwood or laminate or whatever it is. Um, and just how it totally it makes it look like it's a brand new center, like you move to a brand new building just from painting. Um, or it could be pictures of the events. Maybe you go out to one of the local theaters and you have an outing with all of your participants and they're all wearing uh, a senior center shirt that's the same color. So they're all part of the center. Uh, those are just really fun things that we can add to our presentations and show the impact and meaning of the money that we're getting. And now the boring stuff, we need all the receipts. Uh, we need to make sure that we can account for all $8,000 that you're spending. Um, this goes down to the penny. Um, I look at all the receipts for the midterm report Many of you know this. I'll go through your receipts. I'll tally up the number and say, hey, you've spent this amount of money. You have this amount of money left. Just to make sure that by that September 30th, 2024 date, all $8,000 is expended. And then the last thing that's not a requirement but is really, really good to have if you can get it are testimonials from your participants. Um, sometimes it's hard to get testimonials when you get a new HVAC system <laughs> and it's kind of behind the scenes inner workings of we're saving so much money. The participants may not know about that. So some ways of spending the funds is easier to get those testimonials than others, which is why it's not a requirement for the report, but it's really good to have if you have uh, something along those lines. Uh, and we do de-identify those testimonials. So I'm not going to say Teresa said this or Diane said this or Sue said that and Sandra said this. It'll be a participant of the senior center said such and such. All right, a couple key takeaways. I am wrapping up, so please feel free to start typing those questions into the chat box, or we're going to open it up here for questions in just a minute. Again, I really want you all to remember that these funds are non-recurring. We want them to be recurring every year, but we cannot guarantee. We are very, very excited that for the last three years, we've been able to get funds and even increase the amount of funds that we've received, but we can't guarantee from year to year that that's going to continue. 125 senior centers across the state are going to get $8,000. Again, one grant per senior center. You cannot uh, ask for multiple grants. Scoring. We went over that big scoring metrics. One thing that I forgot to mention, so the scoring, there's going to be a lot of people who have the same scores, right? Some people are going to get sevens and eights based on what that scoring metric is. If there is a tie, meaning um, two centers have the exact same score, and it comes down to, you know, that center 125 and 126, the way, since it's the same score, the way we determine who gets the funds and who doesn't is who submitted their application first. The only kind of fair way that we can do it since we are doing this based on a scoring criteria. So get those proposals in as early as possible. 
W-9, we went over all that craziness. Uh, please make sure that your name is the same that it is with your employee identification number with the IRS. Uh, make sure you don't add any additional lines. No little smudge marks, no accidental things, no whiteouts. They really hone in on the whiteout. It's crazy. Um, and that the signature, the date for your W-9 is in the year 2023. And lastly, we have those reports. So March 29th is your midterm report. October 31st is your final report. And if you are a grant recipient, I promise you'll get many, many emails like you all are used to from me reminding you of these things. I know everyone loves all of my emails. Last friendly little reminders, and then I'm going to get to the questions. I see a couple coming into the chat box. Get your applications ready now. There's no need to wait. You can start the process. You just can't submit it yet. <laughs> so I love last year we uh, did about a two-week early, just like we did this year. We let people get their application ready to go. And then July 5th, I had 15 applications in my inbox. It took me about a day and a half to go through them all, which was great. But everyone, like it was already application opened. Boom, we're getting applications. So get your stuff ready now. Applications open on July 5th. Have a great 4th of July, then send me your application. <laughs> and then August 4th, again, 30 days, well, a month work time, uh, is the application deadline. And those applications are due by 4 o'clock p.m. Central Time, 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Um, if you mail and we don't get your mailing, we got to look and see when the postage stamp is. Um, so please, if you're going to mail uh, your application in, please get that in the mail as soon as possible because our mail is a bit delayed here at the state. Uh, the electronic format is the easiest. It's going to give me that timestamp. Fax is also very efficient. It'll give me another timestamp. Mail, kind of use that as your very, very last resort. All right, now I'm going to open it up for questions, but I'm also going to put my contact information up here because it has that lovely fax number that many of you are probably like, how do I send her a fax? She's telling me to. How do I do it? So there is my contact information. We had a question, can this go to pay for a driver who brings people to the center? Vehicle, question mark. Uh, we have had centers in the past purchase a vehicle, used vehicle, or have part of the funds go to purchasing a vehicle in the past. So yes, that is allowed. Um, in terms of paying people to be a, paying for a driver um, or paying for staff in general, um, it is allowed, but we're not encouraging people to pay for staff using these funds. Again, because the funding is non-recurring. So if you do want to have someone be paid, have a paid position, you would only be able to tell them you have a position until September 30th of 2024. Uh, because it's not guaranteed that we're going to get that funding next year. So it is allowed, though it's not encouraged. Uh, is the electronic application open now in order to work on it? No. The online application is not open, and it's not going to be open until July 5th. We don't want any early submissions, and then I have to tell you, hey, we got your submission, but we're not going to count it. you got to do it again. <laughs> so I recommend... Um, typing it all out in maybe a Word document, or I can send everyone the request for a proposal in a Word document as well. I did it in PDF just to make sure, you know, there wasn't any accidental deletions. Uh, but I can send you that in a Word document, and that way you can kind of fill in everything that's needed, uh, and then it'll be easy copy and paste into the electronic format when that opens on July 5th. Would that be something that everyone is interested in? I'm seeing some heads shaking. Feel free to give me a thumbs up in the reactions. Awesome. I'm going to turn my camera on so y'all can see me. I'm back. All right, so I will send out uh, the PDF and the Word version of the request for proposals in my follow-up once I get this video recording up on our YouTube channel. Oh, with PDF. Excellent. All right, those are the only questions that have come into the chat box. So now's the time. Uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask any questions. Uh, my part of the presentation is complete besides answering the questions. So thank you all so much again for attending. I really appreciate it. I hope we're going to get a record number of applications this year. So send them in starting July 5th. What other questions do we have? Yeah, 
if you don't have any questions, you're free to go. <laughs> Thank you all later. Y'all yeah, have a great week. Thank you. Hi, everybody who's waving. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you all. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording so that way if anyone has any questions that they don't want recorded. Uh, so thank you all again for coming.